Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, we are going to start with a new tutorial series, and this is on Java. Now, before understanding the anatomy of a Java program, let us briefly go over some of the important points about the language. So, Java is one of the most popular and widely used programming languages. It is an object oriented programming language. It is owned by Oracle and more than 3 billion devices run on Java. Now with Java, you can do mobile app development using Android. So mobile app development using Android. Then you can make desktop GUI applications. You can make a web application and you can also make enterprise applications. Now the code that you and I write in Java, it gets compiled into bytecode. So here is your code. So your Java code gets compiled to something called as bytecode and this bytecode is machine independent so this means you can run java code on any platform using something called as java runtime environment so java is platform independent so you can easily run the java code on any platform if you have the bytecode available with you the bytecode is made to execute on Java virtual machine regardless of the underlying architecture. Now before we start with Java, you first need to install it onto your system or you can directly follow the videos using an online REPL like REPL.IT. So head over to REPL.IT and you can create a REPL and you can start following along. Also the link for an article explaining the installation of Java and its integration with Visual Studio Code can be found down below. Now the first thing is that the smallest building blocks of Java programs are functions. Now if you are familiar with any programming language, you must be knowing that function is a block of code that performs a certain task. Now as a metaphor, think of the buttons under remote control of a TV. So this is your remote control with several buttons on it. And let us say this is our TV. Now each button that you can see on the remote control is just like a function that performs a task like increasing the volume, changing the channels and more. Now let us see how we can code a function in Java. For this we need to understand the anatomy of a function. So you start by specifying the return type of the function. So return type. Now some functions return a value like a boolean number, other functions don't return anything. The functions that don't return anything have a type of void. So let me write this down. So void type of those functions that don't return anything. Now void is a reserved keyword in Java and we'll go over the list of all the keywords of Java in a separate video. Now after the return type of the function, we have the name of the function. So function name followed by a pair of parentheses. Now here as a best practice, we should give our function a proper descriptive name that clearly identifies the purpose of the function. Now right after the parenthesis, we have the code block. So for defining the code block, we use this a pair of curly braces. Now inside this pair of parenthesis, we can pass a number of parameters or you can say some values from outside the function to invoke your function. So parameters, if any, and inside the curly braces, you write your Java code. Now every Java program should have at least one function and that function is called the main function. So main is the entry point of any Java program. Whenever we execute any Java program, the main function gets called and the code inside this function gets executed. Now this function doesn't exist on its own in case of Java. It always belonged to a class in Java, unlike other languages like C++ and C, where the main function can exist on its own. Now I just mentioned about class. So what is a class then? Let us go over what a class is in brief. So class is a container for one or more related functions. So container for one or more related functions. 
and these functions together form a unit that we call as a class. So for now just think of a class as a container for organizing your code. We will cover about classes in a separate section when we learn about object oriented programming. So in essence every Java program must have one class so a class and inside this class we will have the main function. Now since all related functions are a part of a class we can more accurately refer to them as methods and we can also define them within our class. So all related functions. will go right within the class. So all these related functions are called as methods and they are a part of a class. Next important thing is that all these classes and functions that we define in Java should have an access modifier. An access modifier. So what is an access modifier? Now an access modifier is a special keyword that determines if other classes and methods in our program can access these classes and methods. So we have various access modifiers like public, private, protected and so on. For now let us understand just the public access modifier which we put right in front of the class and our main function. So public then class keyword followed by the name of the class say animal then a pair of curly braces within which we define our main function. Now our main function will make use of the public access modifier to indicate that the main function is publicly accessible. We make use of the public access modifier. Then our main function is always static and we will discuss what static means in the coming videos. So no worries for now. And then it will also have a return type of void. So public static void main and here we specify the arguments so string array args. So these are basically the parameters that you pass to the main function code and then the pair of curly braces for the main function. So our main function lies right within our animal class. So now we know the basic building blocks of a Java program. Let us see them in action in the next video.